What's up, crazy crab tankers? I'm Quackers Co., and this is the fish fry for December 17th, being held at Gone Vision Hydro Plant. Our cookware for this rotation is the Splatter Shot, the Clash Blaster, the Splatter Shot Pro, and the Snipe Rider 5H. With three utensils in this composition, having really incredible wall painting, it'll be helpful to get that Splatter Shot Clash and Splatter Shot Pro doing as much work as possible to get these walls painted. All chargers do a much better job at painting turf than they do at painting walls, so don't leave it up to that snipe rider to start using their shots to paint walls. And every single drop on the wall matters here at Gone Fission. No matter what tide you're on, there are walls that you can paint that make it just a little bit easier to stay alive on this map. These weapons also have the ability of painting while you're jumping off of the ledge and catching yourself on that ink that you just shot, making this map have probably the most amount of movement opportunities that we have. From squid rolling off of walls, jumping over corners, and squid surges to get us just that little bit of extra height on a ledge makes this map just so incredibly fun sometimes. And this composition also has some pretty good firepower to it. So make sure you keep that Clash Blaster up on the platforms, that way you can cause as much damage to lessers, making it much easier for every single other weapon to use their DPS to take it out. And I usually say that the basket area at Gone Vision Hydro Plant is extremely dangerous, which is true. But towards the beginning half of the wave, it really doesn't hurt to stay there right by the basket. I call this the sacrificial lamb strategy. Just chill right there, that way if a scrapper, moz, or flipper flopper is spawning on the other side of the map, they don't go up to the platform. They go straight to the basket, allowing for an easy splat and eggs being put in very quickly. So chill there by the basket, and if you do this strategy, you need to be on lesser control constantly. Keep that basket clear all the time. Towards the latter half of the wave, things might get overran and you will have to start using the platforms again. So at that point, start using the attack and retreat strategy. Attack, get some eggs, get into the basket, put it in, and retreat back to the platforms. Keep causing damage and keep yourself alive. Most of the time, whenever Gone Fission starts going wrong, it's because people started pushing the shoreline to take out something like a stinger or a fly fish, when we have a couple weapons that can reach those stingers, and you can reach any fly fish by jump throwing your bombs with some forward moving momentum. Try to make survival one of your main priorities here on Gone Fission. This map is so small, we need all that damage output all through the wave. On a high tide, things don't change up too much. We do need a little bit more focus on taking out steel eels before they even get onto the map. Try to keep your eye out for when they're spawning, that way you can get to the edge of the platform and fire at them before they've breached the corridor. And slam lids can become extremely useful on some of these corridors. So if you see someone activating it, be careful about doing anything else to it. They may be strategically using that slam lid in order to take out bosses and lessers as they're spawning in. A low tide at Gone Fission changes up the gameplay the most. Considering that all the land movement salmonids have to go through that one single bridge, it becomes an extreme choke point where you can splat a bunch of bosses and have a ton of eggs, but you just can't reach them because of all the enemies. So make sure you lure bosses past the bridge before you splat them. It really helps for the first half of the wave to do a really hard luring, getting enemies as close to the basket as possible. And then once you get to the second half, you gotta make sure that you keep that bridge clear as much as possible. That way you can reach those eggs. So make sure you use the sides, take out fly fish, and when you have prior targets that are sitting there right there at the center of the shoreline, that's a perfect moment to use a special to clear that way. That way you can make sure that you can get those eggs and put them in. Gone Fission Hydro Plant does probably have the easiest glowfly spot of all the maps. That corner platform is extremely useful for funneling all the enemies into one spot, and as long as you have the area painted, it's easy to jump between one platform and the other, moving the salmonids around, making it easier for your teammates to both throw in eggs and to revive a teammate in case they go down. Just make sure that you maintain that line of damage, and if you have the Snipe Rider 5H, try to make sure you're taking out as many goldies as possible. More goldies will only spawn once you eliminate one. So make sure you keep that aim tight and take those goldies out, spawning as many golden eggs as possible. On a griller's occurrence, you need to make sure that you lure the grillers to the basket area first, and then move them up to the higher platforms. This usually works out best by chilling right by the basket area, and then when they get close enough, climb either side of the wall, getting to one of the higher platforms. This will then make the griller turn around, showing his weak spot, giving you guys a perfect moment to splat him right there by the basket. Just make sure you keep one of the weapons besides the snipe rider on small fry control. All of them can do a pretty good job on keeping it clear, that way you can run those eggs and get back to safety. 
During a mothership occurrence, we have three weapons with some really good mobility, so make sure you keep them moving around, taking out those coolers, and running those eggs as quick as possible. The sniper rider should just post up and take out those coolers while they're on their way in. Just make sure you are up there on those higher platforms once that mothership starts approaching. And with the Splattershot Pro's help as well, you can probably eliminate that mothership before it even attaches to the basket. During a Mudmouth Wave, since we don't have any weapon with piercing damage, but we do have the Clash Blaster, Whenever you see a golden mudmouth, make sure that you eliminate it as quick as possible. Those Kohawks will be the hardest enemy to eliminate with this composition, so as long as you're keeping them under control, everything else should go pretty smoothly. During a Kohawk charge, the Spidershot Pro has a problem with ink efficiency, and the Snipe Rider has a charger's damage output. So make sure you put those two weapons into the turrets, that way the Spidershot and the Clash can run those eggs. And make sure you run those eggs as quick as possible. Don't be running around with an egg and a full tank of ink for too long. Make sure you throw that egg as quick as possible and just keep them as a steady flow moving towards the basket. A Goldie Seek at Gone Fish and Hydro Plant can be a little bit confusing sometimes. I'll usually hit the two valves on the two higher platforms first, giving me a clue on whether or not it's on the left side or if it's on the right side. Just remember that when you see a tall gusher that you hit the next closest gusher, that way you can find that Goldie as quick as possible. Since lessers are spawning from the shoreline, it's helpful to find that Goldie as quick as possible, that way you're not overran before you get a chance to have everybody firing at them. And for a giant tornado, keep in mind that the way that we gotta go through is quite narrow, so it doesn't hurt to have someone between where you're throwing eggs and where they're landing to be there to take out some enemies before they get to you, because there's a chance that the enemies will get to you before you're done throwing those eggs. Keep the area clear and make sure that you're just always moving those eggs closer to the basket as quick as possible. Gun Fission can be such a tight map, but we have some options here to make it not just fun, but an exciting stage too. Alright, let's get into the cookware. Our first cooking utensil is the Splatter Shot. The Splatter Shot has incredible turf coverage and wall coverage, and in fact the whole weapon is just a good all-rounder for just about anything you have going on. It can take out fish sticks from the ground level, and it can also take out stingers from just about any locations except for the far corners. But make sure you take this weapon and kind of put it just about everywhere on this map. Keep everything covered, and keep a constant flow of damage on all the lessers. This weapon also has some really incredible mobility for it, so get the area painted and run those eggs as quick as possible. You'll probably have it easiest on egg running. Our second cooking utensil is the Clash Blaster. The Clash Blaster is an incredibly fun weapon for Salmon Run. Just like the Splatter Shot, you can take out fish sticks from the ground level, and you can also take out stingers from a lot of these locations. It's also really, really quick on taking out stingers. So if you dare to jump off to the shoreline in order to take one out, just know that you can take it out quick, and you also have some pretty good mobility to get yourself back. And make sure you do get yourself back, because you need to be up on those higher platforms, causing damage to lessers. Use that radius of blast that you have, in order to cause damage all around this map. And it also does a really good job on painting some walls in the middle of a match too. So if you see a wall that's completely green, make sure you fire a couple blasts on that wall. They'll probably be useful later on in the match. Our third cooking utensil is the Splattershot Pro. The Splattershot Pro has some pretty good accuracy to its range, but its ink efficiency is horrible. So playing this weapon too aggressively and getting down to the ground level is really dangerous. Try to make sure you keep some distance and utilize its range. Try to be the one to take out those fish sticks, that way the other players don't get tunnel vision on them. You can also reach some of these other stingers that the splatter shot won't be able to. And it's helpful to remember that with shooters, once your shot starts to drop, that drop will still cause damage on its way down. So there's some spots where if you don't see the top of a slamming lid, you can fire at it and get the ink to drop and take it out. But if you want to be useful on taking out moths or fly fish, you gotta make sure that you get into the ink and get it back as much as possible with the Spider Shot Pro. It can also reach big shots from all locations except for the right side. For reaching that, you'll need the fourth utensil of this rotation. The Snipe Rider 5H. The Snipe Rider 5H is a peculiar weapon in the game. A full charge takes about two seconds, and once you charge it up, you have five shots that you can shoot, and they're fired whenever you release the trigger. And one thing to always keep in mind with the Snipe Rider is try to make sure that you give yourself as much of a full charge as possible. If you sat there for two seconds with two shots in it, that's a full charge that you could have had, and that's a lot more damage output that you need to be putting out there. Keep an eye out for big shots there on the right side, as you're the only one with enough range to reach them without jumping down to the shoreline. And just like with the GooTuber, if you decide to get down to the shoreline to take out a Stinger, instead of using your charge shots, 
A single tap shot with a snipe rider does take out a single pot. So make sure you stay calm, take out that stinger, and then get yourself back up so that you can fully charge this up. The snipe rider does also not hold a charge whenever you're swimming. So you need to make sure that you're utilizing your time and your damage as much as possible. If you're just running around, you gotta make sure that you're doing something. At least be running eggs or painting something. Try to make sure that you're being useful with this weapon instead of just panicking and running away. And considering it has one of the highest damage outputs once you have it at a full charge, it makes no sense to run away with this weapon. Charge it up and keep those shots on point, and you'll find this as a really easy weapon to keep the area clear, especially when a steelhead shows up. It doesn't hurt to get onto the top of a fish stick, that way you can get a little bit more of an advantage on something like a steel eel or a scrapper. Keep a steady flow of damage output with this weapon, and you'll find it just a little bit easier here at Gone Vision. During an extra wave, all of our weapons have some really good damage output. So as long as someone's always constantly causing some damage to that Kohozuna, while the other players are taking out bosses and spawning golden eggs, it should be pretty easy to cause some quick damage to the Koho. And one of the best strategies I started using for an extra wave is whenever I splat a boss, I'll use two eggs to throw at the Kohozuna, and then I'll take the last one with me, get up to the Kohozuna, and then start causing some damage with my weapon. If something like a flipper flopper, or steel eel, or a scrapper shows up, you have that egg throw to cause some extreme damage and take it out quickly especially with a flipper flopper. Just remember, you will have to cause some damage with your weapon after you throw the egg. But they're quick ways of turning one egg into three. And to start the flow of having three eggs at the ready, make sure you activate your special towards the first half of the wave. That way you can take out some bosses, cause some damage to the Kohozuna with it, and also take out some bosses, spawning some golden eggs really early on in the wave. And the fish fry usually comes up before the stage rotation. So if you wanna catch these updates when they're hot and fresh, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell. And if you want other fellow Grizzco employees to receive these tips, make sure you like and share the video. Bye bye If you want to give the fish fry an algorithm boost, just comment what your favorite or least favorite weapon is of this composition. My favorite will have to be with the Clash Blaster. I barely ever see this weapon in Salmon Run, and whenever I see it, I get really excited for the amount of damage output it has against lessers. Alrighty, have a good one guys. Bye bye Having really incredible wall painting, having really incredible wall painting, what the